Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State Attack. Today I wanted to talk about whether or not dark mode is better for you. Now, I utilize dark mode a lot on my smartphone, my tablet, and even my computer, and I've gotten a lot of questions about it. And I think it's kind of funny because back in the day when I first started in web design in the late 90s, I personally just liked darker looking websites better. And I've always kind of liked that, even though it hasn't always been the thing that is, is cool, the design style that is interesting. But dark mode is the thing right now. And I've, I've wanted to understand more about dark mode and whether or not it's actually better for me. Now, I wear glasses and my eyes are sometimes a little bit more sensitive to things than maybe the average person. And so I'm always interested in different ways to protect my eyes and make sure that my eyes are not degrading over time any more than they would naturally. So I think about stuff like that a lot, the technologies that I use, and I try to implement what I can without going overboard uh, so that I could protect my eyes. So dark mode really is like the craze right now, like every phone, every feature seems to be getting dark mode, and so people are talking a lot about it. It's one of those things that I think we didn't realize we wanted until we realized we didn't have it, and then when we got it, we're like, okay, cool, we have dark mode. <laughs> so dark mode typically is just like a contrast mode. It basically just inverts the colors, so things that were light are now dark, things that were dark are now light, so maybe a darker background where text is just lit ra uh, rather than the other way around, a white background where the text is dark. So it's just a different way of viewing things. People have asked, is it better? And a lot of times when I talk about dark mode as a feature in other videos, people ask, like, is it better? Like, why would I care? Like, what's the deal about dark mode? Um, now, it can be better depending on the device that you have. And so we'll talk about technology and then we'll talk about like the health stuff. But first with the technology, like dark mode is not going to help if you have an older technology like an LCD type of screen that is actually backlit because the LCDs have to stay on in order to even light the black, if that makes sense. Um, so on an LCD screen, you typically know you have an LCD screen because if that screen is on and you're in a pitch dark room, and even if it was a black screen, if that screen was on, it would still look illuminated to you. You would see the light coming off of the screen even though the color that is being displayed is black. It's not a true black because it's requiring some sort of light. Now with newer technology such as OLED and AMOLED displays, each individual pixel on your screen is individually lit, which means if black is being shown to you, that light is off. And that's really good for battery life because if the majority of what's on your screen is dark, uh, black, then you have no power that's needed to run those things. The power is only going to the pixels that are lit. And so you can save a lot of battery life there. And that has been one thing that I think has pushed forward the dark mode on a lot of these devices is that battery technology hasn't moved that fast. And so we're looking for different ways to save on battery. Dark mode is definitely one of those things. So there's no savings on LCD screens, as I mentioned, because it's backlit. The same amount of lights have to go on to light black than have to light white on an LCD screen. But the newer technologies, there is some power savings there. Um, most devices are LCD, really, except for higher-end smartphones and monitors. Most of the TVs that we're still buying are LCD, unless you buy a more expensive OLED or AMOLED display. A lot of computer monitors, unless you spend a little bit more, are still LCD, even though the LCD quality is better than it's been in the past. It's still LCD, and uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, also as we move it through this talk here. So is dark mode safer for you? Well, I mean, it usually makes the text easier to read, especially at night, and some people are going to have different opinions about this. For me, I find the text easier to read when it's on a dark background than vice versa. The only time that I think that that is flip-flopped for me is when I'm using something like a Kindle reader, where I like the dark text on a white page or what looks like a white page, but it's not a bright, lit white page. It's that e-ink, so it feels a little bit different than, uh, than like reading text on a like black text on a white background on a smartphone so it is typically easier to read uh, some have said that it's less distracting that the uh, text is the only thing that's lit as opposed to the whole background um, and that could be maybe I don't know I, I haven't I've tried to really 
pay attention when I'm using a device and think, is the dark mode helping me be less distracted or is it, or is it not? Like, what's the difference? Some people have said that dark mode is less distracting for them. I don't know. Easier on your eyes is a conversation I've heard too. Sometimes I think that it is. If you're on an older style display like an LCD, I don't think it's going to matter that much because you have the same amount of light shining at you. Even though some of that light is darker, you still have light being projected at you. Uh, of course, with OLED displays and those pixels, those are blowing directly at you as well, but you'd have less of those uh, shining at you if the background and everything was dark and the only thing that was lit was text or a photo or something like that. So I don't know. Might be easier on your eyes. I think it's easier on your eyes at night because it's less shining at you in a darker room. Whereas maybe when you're outside and you're trying to see something on a screen because it's in dark mode and you have to squint a little bit, it might not necessarily be easier on your eyes because you're having to use those muscles in your eyes to really focus and try to see them a little bit better. The LEDs, of course, like I said, are still emitting directly at your eyes uh, with even these newer technologies. Uh, of course, all the studies are saying that it's a lot easier on your eyes than an LCD screen, but you know these technologies haven't been around for a long time. So really, they only have the amount of study that they've had since the technologies have come out, and people haven't grown up and grown into old age with these technologies yet, so we really don't know. But I have read a lot about what the professionals say, and this is where it's kind of gonna get a little nitpicky because even the professionals have different opinions and have things to say about this. But um, what I did read, it was that the eye does have to work harder when there's less light as the eye has to dilate. And when your eyes are dilated, it's actually taking more uh, muscle strength in your eyes than in a less dilated state. Of course, when you're outside and it's super bright and you have to squint, that's probably like taking some strength too, but at a natural rested state for your eyes, I guess going in either direction, whether you're squinting and, uh, and your eyes are having to hard, work hard to prevent light from coming in versus the other end of the spectrum where your eyes are working really hard to get enough light in, uh, some professionals have said that like dark mode actually makes your eyes work harder. I don't know. I think it's nitpicky and I think it really comes down to the individual. Looking at bright lights for too long do give some people headaches and so a darker screen, uh, but, but a darker screen could also have the same effect. Brighter light uh, being projected into your eyes using a lighter mode on your screen Harder on your eyes might give you a headache, whereas other people may have to focus a little bit harder and like that dilation of their eyes actually might give them a headache. So it really does come down to a use by use cases per person. It, everybody's different. We're all different. The things that strain me might not strain you and vice versa. So even the things that the professionals were saying online, uh, some of the studies that I read, they leave a lot to, they leave a lot to be, uh, you know, looked at in different ways and that's why I put it this way as I was explaining it to you. So what mode should you use? I recommend using whatever mode you want. Use what mode works best for you. Uh, if one mode feels better for you, doesn't give you a headache, allows you to look at your screen more even though we should be limiting our screen use as much as possible, use that mode that seems to be easier for you. But try to just be mindful of your screen time regardless and limit it whenever possible. Uh, for me, I like the fact that on the smartphones you can have the screen go from light mode during the day to dark mode during the night, and it will automatically change that based on a set time that you've given it, or even on the iPhone you can set sunrise to sunset for it to be bright, and then sunset to sunrise, it's in dark mode. And so you could even try both and set it and automate that process. I have a video of how to do that uh, on the iPhone that I just recently released on uh, 11 iOS 13 features that you'll use every day. I talked about dark mode a little bit in that one. So are all screens created equal? We talked a little bit about this earlier on when I talked about LCD being older technology, being harder on our eyes than the newer OLED or AMOLED. 
Uh, the reason for this also is that these older LCD screens have lower refresh rates, which means they're flickering. Those LCDs are flickering. And even though we can't really see it because that flicker rate is higher than what our eyes are able to resolve, it still is affecting us. And so lower rate of flicker, of course, is going to hurt. And these higher refresh rate screens that are flickering faster still, but flickering at a much higher rate, something that we really can't see because it's closer to being constantly on in the spectrum of light, I guess you can say, uh, are better. So you definitely want to get away from flickering screens and lower contrast screens that put off excessive blue light. These lower contrast screens, which typically are older technology, are a little bit harder because there isn't enough separation between the darks and the lights on our screens, and that makes our eyes work harder. That's why contrasty photos even just feel better to us when we look at them. A flatter photo that doesn't have a whole lot of separation between the dark areas of the photo and the light areas of the photo um, just seems washed out to us, and we just don't, it isn't visually appealing, but it also is not appealing to our eyes because our eyes have to work harder. So if you have an older display such as an LED, an older LED, or even a CRT display, you should probably move past that if you are serious about making sure that you're protecting your eyes. Those devices are old. You should get rid of them and move on to something new, uh, something with a higher refresh rate, uh, or even a uh, more modern technology. Those uh, flicker, lower contrast, more blue emitting, those types of displays are going to be more harsh to your eyes than the newer type. So like I said, AMOLED and OLED displays, they have a higher contrast level, a higher, uh, and they're per pixel lighting, which makes it a lot easier, um, whether you're using light or dark mode, so that less is projecting at you and being blasted into your eyes. The higher refresh rate means no flicker or less flicker. And on these devices that are AMOLED or OLED, you typically can control the emission of blue light as well. There's some sort of blue light filter or a way to block out that blue light, which is great. IPS displays are a newer type of technology that is also LCD, but it's a newer type of LCD technology that allowed LCD to kind of morph into a more uh, a technology that's better for our eyes, that's still not as good as AMOLED or OLED, but has its own benefits and drawbacks as well. So the IPS, it's, it's not as good, but it's way better than the old LCD. The IPS displays can have higher refresh rates. They uh, don't flicker nearly as bad. They also can have some more control over the blue light emission. They have higher contrast ratio and all that stuff. So those are all super important things that uh, separate those displays. And so these are the types of displays that you'll hear about right now. Typically are IPS, OLED, AMOLED, those are the best. And then of course, on the lower end, we have the LCD. And then, of course, the CRT big tube type displays that we had of the past that most of us don't have anymore. All right, so some closing thoughts before I end this video. Our eyes are something that we can't easily replace. You can't go get a new eye. You can't replace your eyes. You can't grow a new one. Our eyes are not something that heal just as easily as a little scratch that we get on ourselves or a sunburn or whatnot. So we want to protect them at all costs, and that means utilizing the right technologies that we can in our lives so that we don't uh, end up harming our eyes any sooner than they normally would just be by being alive. So, of course, we're only working with what we know now as technology moves forward when LCD came out it was awesome and now LCD is harmful and so we learn things as we move and as technology advances we're able to better care for ourselves and so just staying on top of that and understanding how these things work is super important uh, definitely share with me any thoughts that you have down in the comments maybe you've gotten an opinion from someone that's a professional before I'd love to hear that of course I did my research for this video and I read a lot and tried to take my own understanding and apply it to that as well. But there is always new information coming out, and we definitely want to stay on top of that, especially when it comes to the topic of something like our eyesight. So that's going to do it for this video. If you liked this format of video, definitely subscribe to the channel. Let me know down in the comment section below. But that's it for today, so thanks so much for checking out the video, and I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.